Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brit, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and more, and I try things out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, what not to buy. Today I am back with a roundup, the best powder foundations out there. I have Pile that I have been testing for the past couple of weeks, and these are from previous, these some are new, and I've got it narrowed down to the top three foundation powders, and I wanna share that with you today, so if you wanna see what those are, then stick around and let's get into it. This one's been a long time coming, it was a project, and I was up for the challenge, and I wanted to go through all of the different foundation powders that I've tried and tell you what my top favorites are. I got it down to three, which is really good. I will have links to everything that I mentioned here, the other reason why I was focusing on foundation powders is because one of my favorite application techniques, techniques, I don't know, it's something that I've just been wearing a lot lately is a lightweight moisturizer with SPF and a foundation powder dusted on top. It is what I've been doing for weeks when I'm not filming, when I'm just doing every day, when I just need to grab and go and get out of the house. This is a combination I've been adoring, so I thought I would share with you the top three that I liked. Now, these have been from a while back, so I have the reviews, but I kind of forgot. You know, you forget. There are a lot of different powders. You're like, what's different about that one? And wait, did I like that finish? I don't remember if I like that finish. And if so. you love seeing videos like this and want to see more of them, then please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon, y'all, so you never miss another video. All right, the first. I'm gonna go backwards in order. I'm gonna save the best for last out of the three, and I will start with, with third place. And I'll talk also about the other ones briefly at the end that did not make the cut. You'll see kind of full spectrum here. Third place goes to the classic Jane Iredale Pure Pressed base powder foundation. It is a mineral foundation. I'm looking at this in the shade Honey. You can see swatches on the video. I'll put those up and also application. The finish was really good here. It really meshed well with the skin. I loved the Honey shade as well. When it went on, I only needed to do maybe one or two applications. This powder is more powdery. There are some creamier powders. There are some that feel like straight up powder. Uh, and this is a baked powder, obviously. So. It feels a little bit more powdery, but it doesn't read powdery once applied to the face. So I love this for that. And really it was mostly about the finish and the shade range that I enjoy. My skin didn't look like I had pancake mix or anything on there. So you can really control the amount that you wanna put on and you can build it up to more medium coverage. We'll talk about a full coverage option for you, but still the only reason it did not rise in the ranks is because I saw a little bit of settling, but nothing crazy out of all the ones that I tried. Just a little, I was like really in there looking at it. Consider that if you have oilier skin types, but this is just a wonderful cult classic, I think. A lot of people still use this for a reason. It's $44. I have less expensive ones that I like more, but I just wanted to throw this into the bunch. The runner up the Alima Pure Satin Matte Foundation. So I have a full review that I just did a video on here. It was the 2020 update. I have it in neutral four. This is $28. I forgot to mention, I love that this is also a refill, the Jane Iredale. This does not have a refill option available currently. Some of their other products do, this does not. Things I loved about this were the loot, it's a loose powder, and I loved how it texturally glided onto the face. It was all about the finish. This over a tinted moisturizer or an SPF was lovely. This has an amazing shade range, 45 shades. It has better for my skin ingredients than the pressed option from Alima Pure, which I also really liked and I have over here too, right here actually. But I really, really ended up loving this one more. I just used a big fluffy brush swiped it all across the face. And if you saw that video, then you could see the wear test by the end of the day. I was like, wow, I think it actually looks better end of day than it did in the beginning. So this you can do naturally. You can get a very nice natural finish here. You can also build it up closer to fuller coverage, but it just depends, I think, on what you have to prep underneath. I wouldn't lean on this for full, full coverage. This to me is still natural, but a very solid medium coverage option that builds nicely. It just melts into the skin with the moisturizer underneath, in my experience, and I love it. Also lasts for quite a long time. That's kind of another perk. Drum roll, and the winner of the bunch is the Au Naturel. 
semi-matte powder foundation. I have this in porcelain. This was gifted to me. I remember getting it and I was like, ooh, porcelain. What I can do with that, that seems really light. Ended up just being amazing. So this guy, the coverage here was incredible. One swipe and you're like, wow. That is impressive. And you can build this up. This is a full coverage option out of the three. This is the fullest coverage option. It is $32, so it's the middle price point out of all of them. Also, similar to the Alima Pure Experience, blends in. I would say this is a bit finer of a powder. It blends in a little bit better. It just sort of meshes and does that magic, you know, with whatever you already have on your skin in a way that looks phenomenal. I love how this looked on top of my skin. And while I don't usually opt for full coverage, if I need it, this is where I will go every time. And I've tried a bunch of other ones. So this is the winner, Au Naturel. You usually don't see me feature it because this is why I wanted to do this. All of these are sitting here and as I'm cleaning things out for the season, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta try this guy. Oh yeah. I have to remind myself that these magical little clean beauty goodies are in there and they need to be shared again because we forget. So the other guys that I have here, I have the Anika Loose Mineral in Trust. That was, I think, a little bit heavier on application, looked a little bit more like I had feathering on top of the skin. The Alima Pure pressed powder, while the coverage was nice, wasn't so keen on the ingredients and here. Mineral Fusion, I have this one. This is supposed to be more of a budget-friendly option, but to be honest with you, the Lima Pure is also budget-friendly in this realm. This gathered in different places on the skin. That was the key call out here. That's why I didn't really, really love it. The Hint Powder Foundation as well. This was a nice one. It went on kind of nicely. It just didn't really show up and I had to keep applying and then the finish was okay. It was just very mediocre for what I was looking for. And then I have the Inika Baked Foundation in Grace. While I really liked this one, very silky, very fine. I couldn't get enough oomph from it. I couldn't get enough wow. Similar kind of to the hint, I was like, what are you doing for me? Like, what have you done for me lately? That's really a quick run through of everything that did not make it into the top three. I feel really strongly about all of these as options. Of course, it depends on your skin type and what you're looking for. If you need something that's a little bit more natural, I would probably err on the side of the Jane Iredale. If you're looking for something full coverage, lighter weight, au naturel, if you're looking for something that you can play with and build with and still get a flawless finish, medium coverage, kind of in the middle of the road there, Alima Pure. That's all I got for you today. So hopefully you found that to be helpful. I actually found this to be really helpful because it allowed me to retest and update everything. And also, I have three more coming up that I've been testing. The most recent is the Cloven Hallow Press Foundation, which I have to tell you, I am loving. I'm gonna have a scorecard up for that soon. We'll see if it gets into the next roundup, but I'm feeling very positively about this. Then I have the Ilia Waikiki Run. Oh, actually, no, this is just a translucent powder, but that's coming up. Whoops. And then I have the Lily Lolo Mineral Foundation in Cool Caramel. So that's cool. I'm getting some smaller brands into the mix as well. Like I said, this is from what I've been doing till present it is the bigger names, but I am keeping my eyes open for those smaller brands and open to your suggestions. They're really helpful. So thank you for that. Now I'm gonna go put it all away and start testing another category. It's probably gonna be mascaras next. So if you wanna see that, then let me know in the comments below. And again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you never miss another one as it comes through. And I will see y'all right back here in a hot minute. Go enjoy your weekend. Happy Friday. Bye.